In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning. Today is the uh, Feast of the Presentation of Mary in the Temple. Um, there's, no, um, there's no historical precedence for this feast because it was not the custom to present girls in the temple as it was boys. Uh, so this feast really grew out of doctrine and devotion to Mary. And it celebrates her, her absolute um, devotion uh, and determination uh, to follow God's will for her in the plan of salvation. So today we, we honor Our Lady under the title of her presentation. Calling to mind our sins now, let us ask God's forgiveness. Your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Lord. You are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, as we venerate the glorious memory of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, Grant that through her intercession that we too may merit to receive from the fullness of your grace the fullness of redemption. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Maccabees. Eliezer, one of the foremost scribes, a man of advanced age and noble appearance, was being forced to open his mouth to eat pork. But preferring a glorious death to a life of defilement, he spat out the meat and went forward of his own accord to the instrument of torture as people ought to do who have the courage to reject the food which it is unlawful, unlawful to taste, even for love of life. Those in charge of that unlawful ritual meat, meal took the man aside privately because of their long acquaintance with him and urged him to bring meat of his own providing, such as he could legitimately eat and to pretend to be eating some of the meat of the sacrifice prescribed by the king. In this way, he would escape the death penalty and be treated kindly because of their friendship with him. But Eliezer made up his mind in a noble manner, worthy of his years, the dignity of his advanced age, the merited distinction of his gray hair and of the admirable life he had lived from childhood. And so he declared that above all, he would be loyal to the holy laws given by God. He told them to send him at once to the abode of the dead, explaining, at our age, it would be unbecoming to make such a pretense. Many young people would think the 90-year-old Eliezer had gone over to an alien religion. Should I thus pretend for the sake of a brief moment of life, they would be led astray by me, while I would bring shame and dishonor to my old age. Even if for the time being I avoid the punishment of men, I shall never, whether alive or dead, escape the hands of the Almighty. Therefore, by manfully giving up my life now, I will prove myself worthy of my old age, and I will leave the young a noble example of how to die willingly and generously for the revered and holy laws. Early Eliezer spoke thus and went immediately to the instrument of torture. The, those who shortly before had been kindly disposed now became hostile toward him because of what he had said, seemed to them utter madness. 
when he was about to die under the blows, he groaned and said, the Lord in his holy knowledge knows full well that although I could have escaped death, I am not only enduring terrible pain in my body from this scourging, but also suffering it with joy in my soul because of my devotion to him. This is how he died, leaving in his death a model of courage and an unforgettable example of virtue, not only for the young, but for the whole nation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord upholds me. The Lord upholds me. O Lord, how many are my adversaries. Many rise up against me. Many are saying to me, there is no salvation for him in God. The Lord upholds me. But you, O Lord, are my shield, my glory. You lift up my head. When I call out to the Lord, he answers me from his holy mountain. The Lord upholds me. When I lie down and sleep, I wake again, for the Lord sustains me. I fear not the myriads of people arrayed against me on every side. The Lord upholds me. Alleluia, alleluia. God loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead, climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received Jesus with joy. When they saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood his ground and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. So as I mentioned yesterday, uh, we have been listening to the journey narrative in Luke's Gospel these past almost two months. And, and in journey narrative, as Jesus makes his way to Jerusalem uh, and the cross, he has been teaching his disciples. He's been revealing who he is. And he's been giving them very practical lessons in what it means to walk the way as his disciples. And now we're at Jericho. It's the last town before downtown Jerusalem. It's the last stop on the road. And Luke is presenting to us um, some scenarios that try to really summarize what we have learned in this journey narrative. Yesterday, the blind man had the insight of faith. He understood who Jesus was, and he was willing to follow Jesus to Jerusalem, to the cross. Today, Zacchaeus, the great sinner. This story is meant to uh, summarize for us the fact that Jesus has come to save sinners. He is the divine physician. He's the divine healer. And look at the gospel today. Jesus looks up at Zacchaeus. He doesn't look down at him. He looks up at Zacchaeus. He doesn't look down at him in some kind of disparaging way. Jesus gazes up to this man, this sinner, this traitor to his people, and he offers him salvation. 
It's a sign to us that Jesus never looks down on us because of our sins. Jesus always sees us, not for what we have done, not for the sins of our past, but Jesus only sees us for what we can be, who we can be, what we can be, when touched by his grace. Forgiveness is there. Jesus has come to forgive us, to heal us, to transform us. He never looks down in, at us, but looks up, as he did to the Z Zacchaeus in the gospel today. Should always be a great source of encouragement to us, that we have a future. God always gives us a future. He never tires of forgiving us. He has come to seek us out. So we have peace in that. We have forgiveness in Jesus. And it's also a challenge for us not to look down at anyone else who might be living the faith differently than what we think they ought to. Jesus never looked down on people. We should not look down on people. But we should only see them as Jesus what does, with a gaze of mercy and forgiveness. Today we celebrate the Jesus looking at us, uh, forgiving us. Let us always stand in thanksgiving for the blessings of forgiveness and redemption. And let us pray that our lives might reflect that in our interactions with one another. Let us bring our petitions to the mercy of the Lord. That all members of God's holy church may be drawn by Christ into a deeper relation with him and with one another, let us pray to the Lord. That all who serve in positions of judicial or political power may be animated by the Spirit to be examples of truth and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that all who are persecuted by, for their belief in Jesus may grow stronger through the help of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us in this community of faith may be given the gifts of courage and fortitude on our road of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord that all who have died in the light of Christ may be welcomed into the peace and joy of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord uh, for Deacon Perry Iannacone, for whom this Mass is offered, and for, what, for whom do we pray today? Seeking the intercession of Our Lady for peace. Hail Mary, Amen. full of grace, the Lord is with thee. We pray these many things through Christ our Lord.
you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Lord, as we honor the memory of the mother of your son, we pray that the oblation of this sacrifice may, by your grace, make us an eternal offering to you. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks and to praise your ex exalted in all your saints, especially as we celebrate to memory the Blessed Virgin Mary. Truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked upon the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of salvation, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so with all the choirs of angels and saints, may our voices be one in grateful praise as we say, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look then not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, as we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech your mercy that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. We pray through Christ our Lord. Lord our God, in this great sacrament, we come into the presence of Jesus Christ, your Son, born of the Virgin Mary and crucified for our salvation. May we who declare our faith in this fountain of love and mercy drink from it the water of everlasting life. We pray through Christ our Lord. 